In our previous lecture, we uh, talked about the mesh current analysis method, which, uh, which is the second analysis method that we introduced uh, for linear time invariant resistance circuits. The first method was no voltage analysis method. And in that method, what we do is we try to formulate the circuit in terms of known voltages and how we formulate the circuit is we write uh, KCL or the current equation at each node in terms of node voltages and we claim that mesh current analysis method is the dual of that method where uh, the formulation variables are mesh currents and what we do is we write voltage equations uh, KVL equations in terms of mesh currents at each mesh. Okay. And uh, we had a couple of examples last time for the mesh current analysis method. Now that analysis method requires a little bit of modification when we have uh, when we have a current source between two inner meshes. Okay. And when that is the case, we cannot directly express the voltage across the terms of the current source in terms of mesh current. So what we do is there are two uh, modifications, there are two possible ways to approach the problem and now we're going to see both. Okay. So when there is a current source between two in inner meshes We cannot express its voltage directly in terms of our formulation variables, okay. in terms of mesh currents. So what we do in such cases is the following we do it of the following here is method one and then we have a method two which is a slight improvement of Method uh, one. Therefore, method two is usually more preferable than method one. Let the the voltage of the current source, which we cannot express in terms of mesh currents, be one of the from mesh variables. Okay, so you you so uh, you augment the number of increase the number of formulation variables, okay? And by doing that, you have to also increase the number of equations, and the, the extra equation that you need will be coming from the, the constraint equation. We'll see uh, what that means in the uh, next example. So let the unknown voltage, let's call it V, across the current source, Our formulation variables. 
just to uh, demonstrate this suggestion here. So we have two inner meshes. Okay. So let's label the uh, mesh cards. Let's be I1. Let's be I2. Okay. Direction is clockwise by convention. So what we do is we write KB up with each mesh. Okay. And we express the voltages in terms of mesh cards. Now that if you try to write KB up in this mesh, this voltage you can express in terms of the mesh current. There's also no problem with that resistor here, but when you come here, you come across here, you cannot directly express the, uh, the voltage of that current source in, term, in terms of mesh currents. Okay, so here what's been suggested is if you cannot express that voltage, then consider it, consider it as one of your formulation variables, V. Okay, so the formulation variables are R. I1, I2, okay. the mesh cards, the usual formulation variables, and on top, on, on top of that, we also include voltage V. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will write the equations in terms of those three formulation variables. Since we have three unknowns, we require three equations. So, First question is coming from KDL uh, at mesh one. Okay. So we have this voltage plus minus this voltage plus this voltage plus minus plus V and that must equal to zero by KDL. Okay. Now this voltage is R one times this current and that current in terms of mesh current is directly equals mesh current. So this voltage is R plus minus R one times. I1. This voltage likewise is R2 times I1. And finally, this voltage, since we cannot express them in terms of I1 and I2, we take the right as one of our unknowns. Okay. So we have R1 I1 plus R2 I1 plus B equals 0. So that's our equation 1. And let's do the same thing at the second mesh. Okay, suppose we start from this point. This voltage is R3 times this current, and that current directly is mesh current itself. So we have R3 I2 plus that voltage, which is known. It's the voltage of the independent voltage, so Vs. And finally, this voltage plus minus that voltage, and that voltage plus minus that voltage is minus V. Okay. So here we have. Okay. Those are the equations that we can write using KVM, and that's all. So, but we need one further equation, and that further equation is coming from KCL. It's called the constraint equation. Okay. And here we have the current of this branch. We know that current because it's a current of independent current, so that current is IS. And this current, this branch current equals, it's in the same direction with mesh current 1, and it's in the opposite direction with mesh current 2. Therefore, it equals the difference of those two mesh currents. I1 minus I2 must equalize, and that's our third equation, called the constraint equation. Okay, three equations, three unknowns, and then solving those three equations, we can figure out the unknowns. Okay. Let's put this set of equations into matrix form. We have, okay, let's do this elsewhere. meaning we have three unknowns and this is our vector that contains the unknowns. Okay. Here is the vector that contains the unknowns and here is the matrix whose entries are determined by the circuit parameters. 
So I1, I2, and B. These are our unknowns. And to fill in the entries, let's look at the equations. Okay. For the first row, we look at okay, since this vector of unknowns is uh, of dimension three, of size three, this matrix must be three by three matrix. Okay. For the first row, we look at the first equation. We have R1 plus R2 times I1 plus <coughs> zero I2 plus V equals zero. Okay. For the second row, we look at the second equation. Zero I1 plus R3 times I2 minus V and what remains is Vs. We throw it to the other side, it becomes minus Vs. Okay. So that's the second row. And for the third row, we look at the third equation, which is our constraint equation, and says I1 minus I2 equals Is. Okay. I1 minus I2 equals Is. And that's the mesh equations expressed in matrix form. So that was our method one, where we introduce the voltages that we cannot express in terms of mesh currents as uh, R formulation variables or R extra formulation variables. Now what we will do is we will try to, in our method two, we will try to ex try, try to express everything in terms of mesh cards, okay? We don't in increase the number of R unknowns, and we can do that by the following method. Method 2. Write KVR pretending that the two meshes We have the problematic current source, okay, that thing, which there is the current source. source, uh, excuse me, voltage source between two non-ground nodes, what we did was we uh, consider those two nodes as a single super node. And now what we're doing is, is the dual of that. If there's a current source between two inner meshes, what we, we're going to do is we're going to consider those two inner meshes as a single mesh, inner mesh. Okay. Uh, super, it's called super mesh. Such mesh is called We write the KVR at that super mesh, and then that will not give us enough many equations, and the extra equation will be coming from, as before, the constraint equation. Okay. So let's apply that method on a very similar but slightly different example. This is our 
first mesh current, this is R, second mesh current. And this time we don't want to introduce an extra formulation variable as uh, like the voltage across the terms of the current source. Okay. Uh, formulation variables are I1 and I2. Now since we cannot write KBL because we don't know at that mesh or mesh 2 because we don't know the voltage of the current source, what's been suggested here is combine these two meshes into a single mesh. So therefore, this here is our single mesh, and that's our super mesh. Let's call it S. Now, what we will do is we will write KBL uh, at that super mesh. Okay, so let's do that. KBL at super mesh. Okay, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up all the voltages that we come across as we travel along that super mesh. So here we have R1 times this current. This current, in terms of formation angle, is R1 times I1. Likewise, this is R2 times I1. And then here we have this voltage plus minus. That's R3 times this current, and this current is I2. We have R3, I2. And finally, we have that voltage, which is Rn. Ix. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. So we have R1 plus R2 I1. So it's R1 I1 plus R2 I2 I1. Okay. Plus this voltage R3 I2, and finally this voltage plus Rn Ix. And by K, yeah. That sum must equal to zero. Now there's a slight problem with that equation, and that problem is this: the presence of that ix. Not that we want everything in terms of our formulation variables, but ix is not one of our formulation variables. Okay. So what we have to do before writing the final form of the equation is to express ix in terms of the mesh counts i1 and i2, and that it turns out that it's quite an easy task. Ix is this current, it's given, okay. and this current, in terms of the mesh currents, is simple to see. Ix directly equals mesh current number one, I. Okay. So Ix is no other than mesh current one, I. Okay. So therefore, to write the final form of the equation, we replace that Ix with I1, and what we have is R1 plus R2 plus R and I1 plus R3 I2 and that equals zero. And now that equation is fine because it's only in terms of our formulation variables. So that's only one equation, but we have two unknowns. We require another equation, and that other equation is the same as what we wrote down in the previous example, namely the constraint equation. Here we have a current source in that direction, Is, and that current equals I1 minus I2, because it's in the same direction with I1 and in the opposite direction with I2. Constraint equation. I1 minus I2 equals Is. This is equation one, and this is equation two. Two equations, two unknowns, and we should be able to figure out the answer. So let's put the, uh, those equations in matrix form. Okay. So, so that everything is more compact. Okay. So in matrix form, we have such an equation, the formation variables or the unknown vector is this vector of I1 and I2. It's of size 2, therefore this matrix must be 2 by 2. And the entries of that matrix, as well as the entries of that right-hand side vector, will be coming from these equations that we have written down. 
for the first row, let's look at the first equation. We have R1 plus R2 plus Rm I1 plus R3 I2 equals 0. For the next row, we look at the next equation, which is a constraint equation. It says I1 minus I2 equals I2. And this is the mesh equation, or mesh equations in matrix form. Now let's see uh, two more examples, in fact one example, but we're going to attack that problem using both our methods and then you can compare which one is more advantageous or beneficial for that particular example. This is a circuit that uh, we need to study. And what you're asked is this particle current flowing over this flow resistor in the given direction. Okay. So let's apply both uh, procedures that we talked about. That is, let's try to solve this problem using both mesh current analysis method and non voltage analysis method. So let's first apply mesh current analysis method. For that, what we do is, the first step is labeling. So we have three inner meshes. We're going to, therefore, label three mesh currents. Let me call this current I1. Let this current be I2. And finally, let this mesh current be I3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write down KDL equations. If we can, if we cannot, then we will combine the problematic meshes into super mesh and then write KDL. And then the missing equations will be coming from the constraint equation. Okay. Now we have three meshes, and traditionally we start from mesh number one. If you try to write the mesh equation at the first mesh, you see that there's a, there's a problem due to this current source. We cannot express the voltage across its terminals in terms of mesh currents. Therefore, what we do in such cases is we merge the two meshes between which we have a problematic current source. Okay, so instead of attempting to write KVL at mesh number one or mesh number two, what we do is we combine those two meshes, obtain a super mesh, and write KVL in that super mesh. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we move on to the remaining meshes. So let's do that. Mesh current for mesh. Okay, and then we will also see non voltage from mesh. Okay. So since we cannot write separately KVL at either mesh 1 or mesh 2, what we do is we write KVL at super mesh 1 and 2. We're talking about this mesh here or this loop. 
Okay, so suppose that we start from this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add four voltages, plus minus this voltage, plus minus that voltage, plus minus that voltage, and finally the voltage of the six ohm resistor. Now this voltage plus minus equals two ohms times this current, and this current is no other than the mesh current because it's in the same direction of the mesh, mesh one. So what we have is 2i1 for this voltage. And then comes this voltage, plus minus. It's 4 times i, okay? 4 times that current. And this current is, in terms of mesh currents, i1 minus i3, because it's in the same direction with i1 and is in the opposite direction with i3. Plus 4 times i1 minus i3. Okay, then comes this voltage, but this voltage we directly know, we don't have to express it in terms of mesh currents, it's the voltage of it's this independent voltage source, and it's directly given to be 12 volts. Okay, plus 12, and finally plus minus this voltage, which is 6 times this current, and this current is no other than mesh current number 2, I2. Okay, and that equals 0. That's our first equation. Now, the formation variables are I1, I2, I2, therefore we have three unknowns, but now we have only a single equation, meaning we have to write two more equations. Okay. Before writing them, let me reorganize terms and make it look prettier. 6I1 plus 6I2 minus 4I3 equals minus 12. I just rewrote this equation in this cleaner form. Let's call this equation number one. we have a current source and we cannot express its voltage in terms of uh, in terms of our formulation variables. So what we're going to do therefore is we're going to figure out the constraint that's imposed on the currents by this dependent current source and though also we have another constraint imposed on the currents by this independent current source and together those two constraints together give us the missing two x-ray equations. So constraint number one. Okay. So that's the constraint introduced by this dependent current source. Now, the direction of I3 is like that, and the direction of this current source is given to be from right to left, therefore they're opposing one another. That means I3 equals minus 3 dx. Okay. So that's, that's the constraint. But that's not the final form of that constraint equation because it contains an unknown that's not one of our formulation variables, namely Vx. So we have to express Vx in terms of mesh currents and only after that, okay, only then we have uh, an equation in the form that we want. So what's Vx? Vx is this voltage. It's given, okay, plus minus. Therefore, it equals two times this current, okay, flowing over two resistor in that direction. And this current, in terms of the mesh currents, is easy to express. This constant is minus I1, minus the first mesh current. Therefore, Vx equals minus two I1. Okay, and then we can get rid of Vx and find a constraint that relates I1 to I3. Okay. I3 equals 6 I1. Now, this equation is in a nice form because it's only in terms of our formulation variables. Okay, so this is equation 1 in terms of formulation variables. This is equation 2 in terms of formulation variables. And finally, we need a third equation because we have three unknowns. And that third equation is again a constraint equation and coming from this independent current source. Okay. 
that's called a constraint pool. Okay. So this direction of current source is given, pointing up. It's in the same direction with I2, and it's in the opposite direction with I1. Therefore, I2 minus I1 equals 2 amps. Let's put it in this form, I1 plus 2. And this is our equation. Okay. Now, let's figure out, let's solve those three equations, 1, 2, and 3. And once we have those equations, we have all the mesh currents. And once you know the mesh currents, you can easily compute this current I here, which is what we were asked to find. Okay. So let's figure out. Combining equations 1, 2, and 3 gives us 6 I1 plus 6 I2. But I2 in terms of I1 is here. I1 plus 2. And uh, minus 4 I3. And I3 in terms of I1 is given here. 6 I1 equals minus 12. Okay. Now this equation is only in terms of I1. We can reorganize the terms and find I1 easily. And that produces I1 equals 2 amps. Okay. This is I1 equals 2 amps. That's R. Once you know I1, you can figure out the remaining currents because we know everything in terms of I1. Okay. And 2 and 4 implies the following I equals, it's in the same direction with I1, it's in the opposite direction with I3, I equals I1 minus I3. And I3 is 6 I1. I1 minus 6 I1, and that's minus 5 I1. I1 is 2 amps. Okay. Therefore, what's I must be minus 10 amps. Okay. So this is more or less straightforward, even though we had some current sources, which we said uh, a little bit probability for the mesh current analysis. We, have, we were uh, able to easily uh, deal with them using the constraint equations and we uh, reached a solution. Okay. Now let's study the same circuit and try to find the same current, this time using our first uh, procedure, okay, no voltage analysis method. is only this node and that node. So that means with two formulation variables you should be able to formulate, uh, with two elements you should be able to formulate this circuit. Okay. So this is our ground node, it's 
we chose it. And then this is our first node and associated node voltage is E1 and that is PR E2. So we have two unknowns, meaning we require two equations. Let's now try to figure out those two equations. Okay. So node one. Let's try KCL at node one. This is our node one. And writing KCL means that we're going to sum this column, this column, and that column, and equate it to zero. Now, what we have is this column, this column is E1 minus E2 over 2. Okay. And then we have this column, which is E1 minus this null voltage divided by the resistance in between. E1 minus the voltage of this node is 12 over 4. Okay. And finally, plus that point must equal to 0. What's this kind? This kind is minus 3 years. Okay. So that's KCM. Yeah. Now this is this equation is not in its final form because it contains an unknown which is not one of our formulation variables. So we have to somehow express Vx in terms of the normal terms. Now this is Vx plus minus, and it's between the first node and the second node, therefore clearly Vx equals E1 minus E2. Okay. And Vx equals E1 minus E2. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite Vx in terms of E1, E1, E2 as such. And then we have the first node equation uh, in terms of our formulation variables. Okay. So what we have is one half plus one fourth minus three one plus minus one half plus three and two equals this minus twelve over four we throw to the other side which makes three. Okay and then in cleaner form we have minus 9 over 4 E1 plus 5 over 2 E2 equals 3. Okay, that's our equation number 1. Now, the second equation will be coming from writing KCL at the second node. Okay, so, node 2. Let's write down KCL this time. We're summing up these three cards and equate it to zero. Now, this card is this voltage plus minus divided by the resistance in between, and this voltage plus minus is E2 minus E1. Okay. So, we have E2 minus E1 divided by the resistance in between, which is 2, plus this column, which is directly known, we don't need to express it in terms of normal voltage, is 2 amps. Okay. And finally, this voltage, which is E2 over 6. Okay. That must equal to 0. So we could write that as minus one half D1 plus one half plus one sixth E2. That makes two thirds. And that equals minus, we throw this guy to the other side. That's our equation. Now let's put equation one and equation two, our normal equations in matrix form. This is known that in this matrix it's two by two because we have two unknowns times E1 E2 equals vector of knowns. 
for the first row, we'll get the first quotient. First quotient is here. So what we have here is minus 9 over 4 and 2.5. And the uh, right hand side is. For the second row, we'll get this equation minus 1 half and 2 thirds will be 2 equals minus. So that's matrix, uh, not the equations in matrix 4. And remember that this matrix we call the node and this matrix 4. Therefore, to solve for e1, e2, all we can do is we can multiply both sides with the inverse of y. And therefore, e1, e2 must be inverse of y times this vector 3 minus 2. Okay. Now, since this is only a 2 by 2 matrix, taking its inverse, we can do by hand. And let's do that. So that would be a nice spot to remember the uh, taking inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay. So, e1, e2 equals inverse of y times 3 minus 2. To take the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, what you do is you multiply a joint by the inverse of the determinant. And the determinant of this matrix is minus 9 over 4 times 2 thirds, which makes what? Minus 3 over 2 minus 5 over 2 times minus 1 half, that makes minus minus plus 5 over 4. Okay. And then this aggregate is you slap the diagonal terms, 2 thirds become, uh, gets here, and minus 9 over 4 gets here, and then you negate the anti diagonal terms, minus 5 over 2 and minus minus 1 half, which is plus 1 half. Then this multiplies 3 minus vector of times. Now, if you compute that product, this is what you obtain minus 28 and minus 24. Therefore, E1, the first node of voltage, is minus 28 volts, and the second node of voltage is minus 24 volts. Okay. But we're not, we were not asked for normals. We were asked for this current here, i, and it's easy to compute once you know the normal voltages. Okay. This current is simply this voltage plus minus over 4. And what's this voltage? Okay, it's E1 minus this normal voltage, and this normal voltage is 12 minus 12 over 4. Okay. What was E1? E1 is minus 28. Minus 28 minus 12 over 4. This makes minus 40 over 4 minus 10 amps, which is what we expect because we have already found this answer using the mesh current analysis method. Now, in our next lecture, we'll be talking about certain equivalences of one-horse and also three-terminal components.